Good afternoon and welcome to the uh, FX Daily Roundup. And you can see here the dollar cat has continued to slide here after the uh, Bank of Canada kept rates unchanged. One of the things, one of the things that we had, uh, had mentioned or looked at with the dollar cat was its inability to close above this key 3336. We, you know, looked like it was, they were making a challenge yesterday, uh, but uh, we can go back here. You can see here with, with um, 3336, we made a couple of runs up here, but we weren't able to go and take that out. And at the time, um, don't bear with me, let me just go and move back in here to the daily. See right here, the 3336, and we weren't able to get a daily close above that. Now we did make a challenge, and that was, that was on face a couple of days ago, and you can see here the 3382, and we talked about them maybe taking some off of the table. We weren't able to close above 3336. Uh, we talked about that this morning um, on the European Crossup webinar, saying that it's almost looked like the wick was a little bit long, but almost looked like a gravestone doji. And obviously, we did slide, have, obviously, had a lot to do with the Bank of Canada uh, choosing to hold uh, rates and change. And we made this push lower. Uh, we're into this level here, 3236. But if you look on the two-hour chart, there is a, uh, a uh, what I called a volume support level right there at 32, 38, 37. We're, kind of, we're trying to make a stand here just to hold that. That, I think, will just be a pause area. Uh, we'll see what the market can do there. Um, potentially, obviously, it can go lower. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we have been looking at the cash dollar index here. And we've seen a pretty good sell-off from yesterday. Uh, when I was on the um, face webinar, I would mentioned that uh, you know our buy chart resistance was 99.44, but happened to be that the 99.40 was this 127% extension, and we talked about that on face. And uh, we since broke off, we've broken off quite a bit. We've already exceeded the 38%, <clears throat> but there's some good a good support level here. You can see that with these touches coming across at 98.44, that's allowing this year to stay on the bid. And I think that um, uh, any weak shorts, people that came in trying to sell this thing a little bit too soon are probably going to you know see this market continue to stay on the bid as we press the stops and getting here with the euro let's take a look here big key area here 1053 although i think uh consumer the dollar index is i think we might be able to make a move like to the mid 1040s and then probably see the market you know start to run out of gas there's 42 maybe right like there we see 45 I, this 1053 has been like the rock of Gibraltar. And when we slid past that area, it was good night, Irene. And obviously then Lagarde added her two cents in about, you know, uh, stimulus. <clears throat> and then added the caveat, uh, caveat that, well, we'll see. We'll have to see if it, you know, if that's in accordance with proper policy, which always was a bunch of BS because basically she just gave you the permission just to just dump this thing. Um, but coming back up here, I think this would be a pretty tough road to hoe. Um, remember that was that key rate that was at that 1060. But that being said, I think it'd be even pretty tough to, if we even got up to 57, it'd be pretty incredible. But this 53 is pretty key level. You can see that. So I don't think if someone's long, that they're going to say, you know, I'm just going to wait till we take out 1053. Can we get above it? Possibly. And I'm talking about we would do that today. Um, but my thoughts would be is if we do rally up, we'll probably run out of gas around the mid 1040. And that's a good area for anybody that picked up this thing, uh, you know, in this lower region to spin out. So who else is going to buy this thing other than people that are short that may be covering? So I think that at that point, you see the market rotate lower, probably come back to challenge about, oh, I don't know, about 989, 990, um, or any moves towards there. Uh, and then, you know, people would gladly reload. But if we do see this mid-1040s, I think that's probably going to be a good area uh, for some people that want to be aggressively short to take it, step in, and let this thing roll back. Because if you're long, one of the things I pointed out to you yesterday, uh, or actually in the, was mentioned in the chat room, <clears throat> you've got to take a look here at the cash dollar index. If you think about this, look, we've already shed practically 100 ticks since yesterday. So you have to wonder about how far can we push up? So, you know, same thing. If you're long the euro, you're probably saying, you know, I'm going to spin out a little bit here, and I'll spin out a little bit more. And probably by the time you get to the 1040s, you're like, hey, I'm not trying to sell the top tick. 
I want to make sure I'm being able to get out. So you probably see some good sun around that mid 1040 area. And then we have, you know, then the market rotates lower and longs will look to going and reload at better prices. So that's why I think we do get that move up here today. <clears throat> and it might be later in the session because, like I said, anybody that's short that came in a little bit too early uh, may have come in before 110, maybe come in the 10 teens. That, and weak shorts, not looking to hold for too long, may end up seeing themselves get stopped out with a nice intertone bid, but it's keeping the euro in check for right now, so you got to give it that. Uh, another market that we talked about was the peso, um, and we've mentioned this a couple of times, mentioned it when I was on Facebook so yesterday here um, about the, <clears throat> the pullback, and we're looking for a pullback to 985 with solid support at 10, 9, 6, 1967. Now we've gone past the 85, and you can see us, you know, working here towards this 1967. So um, once again, like I said, I think that that is probably where the pace will want to go to. And then I think we should see a nice little bounce from that area. Um, probably also working in tune with the, the weaker dollar, to say the least. Uh, the you can see here that volume support area here around 32, 38-ish is they're trying to make a stand here at the dollar cad at least it's a good area for some shorts to lay off a little bit let it rally back up probably take it back on again around 3270 uh cables moving higher uh they did pass that vote um uh, you know uh, law monkeys vote in favor of the initial stage of law to postpone the brexit by 329 to 300 tally so uh, keeping the, the cable with a, a nice bid to it it's had, had a very nice run already it's even gotten beyond what we, we were looking at for our bias chart resistance but obviously you know fundamentals are you know overwhelmingly positive right now for the uh, cable Aussie dollars continue to move higher now we did have our bias chart resistance here at 67.98 we did actually tag up here at 68 cents but we had our bias chart uh, here yeah, 67.97. So we might see just kind of ease back just a little bit. Your dollar we had a 10.17, which is a 38%, but we did make that move. And now that, that's a big area, that 10.26 area here, that was a big area on the way down. And when this thing started to slide, then it broke through that area. Um, but so we got past that and this 10.36-ish area, the market hasn't quite made it. But on those stops, if we can and get the dollar to, to take out and jump down here to this 98.44-ish, uh, um, maybe even dip a little bit lower than that may allow this euro to press up in here and then maybe we take a little bit of a respite in the euro as uh, long as we look to reload at better prices. Um, we're going to move into, let's take a look at the, uh, the bun. So we did come back and test into this little zone. I didn't even see that here. I mean, I had that zone already, but you can see all the touches coming across. You can see where they found the support. They bounced off that. Boy, we had a pretty nice little bounce. Look at this. Look at that. Oh, God. Uh, very, very nice bounce here. Tenure yields. Look at that. They're making a dip also here. Um, S&P still holding up close to their highs, and gold still holding steady up here. Uh, but it's silver, the one that really launched and got past this 1854 and a two hour close. It really launched this and set this up for another move up higher here. So, uh, no real good take, but I have myself on, on, on uh, gold. I really don't keep any much attention at all to silver, although because it's been the driver, I have had it up there. But uh, you can see also very nice rebound here. Look at it. Uh, after being so over, oversold here. But Boone, like I said, uh, nice recovery from here. Uh, obviously, it means uh, lower yields, but certainly the uh, tenure yield is certainly weaker. Let's go on and move into a couple of different cross rates that we generally don't follow. Blake, you made the case yesterday about the euro peso, and you can see here that uh, we have continued to move lower, and henceforth, remember the peso, the dollar peso, same thing, uh, you know, rather weak here. Uh, had this from the prior week here. You can see this now. That's a real shooting star. We saw it come back here, fall back. Not that much, but we came back to challenge it and look like they're going to try to make another push. We failed. And then you can go here with the touches, the rollover, and then one more challenge up in here, and another challenge. And then from there, it's been you know, down, down, down. 
Uh, but uh, probably pretty good area here, a little bit of volume here, but I like that dollar peso around 1967. Um, Swissy, a uh, very good pullback in the grocery room, but uh, <clears throat> by the way, 97.96 will be the 61%. I was looking at that earlier. I don't, haven't traded with Swiss in a long time, but uh, it's always a good market to take a look at that. You can see that 97.96, and you're coming into a nice volume area here, right there. So we do get that dip, once again, corresponds to that dollar index. Maybe chicken down to 98, uh, well, 98.44 is our buy chart. Well, <clears throat> not buy chart, but our, our zone here. I don't think I even had that for the buy chart. I like it. Take a look real quickly here. Um, yeah, we had, uh, I don't know why I had that. I don't know why this thing doesn't keep updating to the correct amount. Um, it didn't update. Uh, still has yesterday's uh, 99.44, I don't know why. But anyway, um, on the dollar index, our low area here is 98.40. And that's just, um, frustrating. I don't know why that does that. <clears throat> Bear with me. It actually has yesterday's um, bias chart support and resistance, which I don't know why it did that. Um, anyway, um, but you can see here, uh, 97.96, it will be the 61% here on the Swissy. There we go. Let's go move into the other cross rates. And you can see here, we've had a very nice run here in the Euro. Yeah, look at this. We've just uh, come up here and look at that. Just about tagged the 61% of this move here in the Euro yen. Uh, and actually pretty good volume there here too. Look at all these touches here. So good resistance here in the Euro yen, 71.30, uh, 17.30 I mean to say. Uh, <clears throat> and we're only 10 ticks away. Good solid level here right here too. So if we push up once again, uh, with the year a little bit on the bid, uh, actually solidly on the bid. Uh, we've got some interesting resistance levels where we can go in and push into. Euro also continues to, to struggle here. And even the Euro Kiwi, if you look at Euro Kiwi, we're into some nice resistance, and that's right there we have on the bias chart. You can see our, our level right there at 73.65. They've already made a press into that, uh, but that was an area that we're looking at, so we'll see what it can do. Uh, Guppy making a very nice push in here. Actually got above uh, the bias chart resistance here. We've made a move up here, but this is a pretty good solid area here. 30, look at that, 30.04. 30.04, so uh, if we do make another run, look at that 30.04 on the Guppy. And obviously Aussie yen uh, now, finally after being dead in the water for so long, finally making the move higher here on this two hour chart. Still has a little bit of a ways to go, but key resistance is going to be there at 72.56. Got another 30 pips that we could actually go, but that would be very good resistance there. 72.56 right there, 72.56. We'll roll back into the main screen again. Dollar cat's still holding here around this volume support area here, 38. Um, your dollar, like I said, keeping its, keeping its bid. Once again, like I said, any weak shorts, uh, they may be buying up as we go into the close. There's really not a reason for someone to step in. If you're looking to short, why would you step in and short right now? Think of it this way. Blake likes to point out, put yourself in the other person's shoes. Why would you want to short right now if you see this market on the bid? So you're thinking, as the closer we get towards the end of the session, the bids, the markets, the pair stays on the bid. So we probably hit some stops. Now, how far we push, we shall see. But right here is a good area here. This 40 to right there, 44. Any push in there, I think, is a pretty decent area to step in if you want to uh, go with aggressive shorts. I saw one of the guys in the chat room, I think it was DK Fair, actually exited his longs and was looking to go in short right there, 1040. And, uh, and then let him roll back down the hill, pick him up, and not only cover your shorts, come back in and uh, add on a value long. As we make that dip, because we've already had, like I said, here in the cash dollar index, we're down almost 100 ticks uh, from yesterday's highs. So it really come off quite a bit. And if you're looking at it from a value level, then you might think, wait a minute, probably gone quite a ways. I want to just lay some off, 
and I'll come back when I can get it at a better, cheaper level. Um, but that's all we have for today. Thanks for joining us here on the FX Daily uh, Roundup. Have a great rest of the trading day.